So good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Webinar Wednesday, our monthly session here from Sight and Sound Technology, which takes place on the first Wednesday of every month. My name is Stuart Lawler. Delighted to be back again to host a uh, Really, a very popular session whenever we, whenever we run these. It's our tech surgery with our wonderful colleagues from the tech support team in Northampton. Um, we're with you for the next hour or so, and this session is where you set the agenda. You come with your questions and your problems, and we will do our best to solve them. Please bear in mind that we want to have as much, um, I suppose, uh, queries and questions from you, the audience today. We do only have an hour to do it and we may not get through everything. So if we don't, please get in touch with our support team and I'll give the info on how to do that towards the end of the session. And please also bear in mind that we may have to take some stuff offline and we may ask you to follow up directly with us afterwards. Now, before I talk about today's session, just a little glimpse ahead to November. We've been asked lots of times to look at Microsoft Teams, and I'm delighted to announce that our next webinar Wednesday, which is on the 6th of November, Wednesday the 6th, is a Microsoft Teams special that we're running in conjunction with Vispero. So if, you're, if you use Teams or if you have friends who use Teams and you want to, um, you want to go to that, put it in your calendar, more information about uh, registration, etc will issue in due course. Now, if you want to get in touch with us today, and we'd love to hear from you with your questions more than any other time, of course, on Webinar Wednesday, we'd love to hear from you today. You can do so by raising your hand if you're on Windows, that's Alt and Y. If you're on a Mac, it's Option and Y. Or if you're joining us on a mobile app, you can find the raise hand button inside the more options area. Similarly, you can chat to us today by pressing Alt and H on Windows and um, on a Mac um, option and H or within the mobile app, you can access the chat options in the more uh, button. And Sharon, a colleague here from Sight and Sound will be keeping an eye on chat. I'll keep an eye on raised hands. So I'm delighted to introduce our panel. Um, Ash Cross is our tech support manager. Ash is no stranger to Webinar Wednesday. Uh, Tristram Llewellyn has also joined us before on Webinar Wednesdays, one of our senior techni technicians, technical support technicians. And we're also delighted to have Will Carter, who's joining us for the first time. And if you've listened to the Smart Vision 3 tutorial that was published a few months ago, that's Will's uh, handiwork and, and a really great production it is as well. Guys, welcome along. We're delighted to have you all. I should also mention Sharon Lyons is with us from Sight and Sound Technology uh, and uh, Sharon's shortcuts and all that great stuff. And indeed, Sharon was with us on last month's webinar Wednesday as well. Uh, Ash, maybe before we get into, and I know there are queries already, we'll get to those in a minute, but before we get into the queries, um, I think I was going to say this is a busy time for you guys, but I think every time is busy for tech support. But is that kind of September, October, maybe even a little bit more busy with people going back to college and stuff? Yeah, exactly that. Um, we have a lot of students returning uh, around this time, so it can can get a bit busier. Um, VI sort of stuff like that, JAWS and Zoom text, that sort of stuff kind of remains the same. Okay. And just if you if you don't mind, I know we talk about this frequently, but you can in some ways never say it enough um, because people do ring up for tech support. They might be a little bit anxious. They need to do something in a hurry. How can people help help you to help them as quickly as possible? Okay. Uh, so basic things like just a brief description of the actual issue. If you can initially, if possible, keep it as brief as you can, and then we can kind of elaborate if needed. Uh, basic information obviously your name, serial number of the product, uh, especially something like JAWS, it really helps if you've got the serial number because then we can check what version you're entitled to, that sort of thing. Um, also, it might be worth me just mentioning we've, we've done a little update to our sort of knowledge base or our support page as well. So if customers feel like they want to kind of self-help um, instead of calling, perhaps in, at least in the first instance, if they want to try and they might even be out of hours or something like that, if you head over to our support page, so you go to sightandsound.co.uk and then support, it will take you to um, like a, a hub that we've filled with loads and loads of like FAQs and just known issues, things like that, that um, Tris, who's joined us today, has had a, um, a big part to play in putting that together and piecing a lot of articles together. But we've also got, um, there's like a, an option there where you can search our knowledge base. You can just literally type the issue you've got and it will, using AI, it will, like find a relevant article and perhaps find a fix for you 
Um, and we've even got a chat bot now that links in with that AI called uh, Glenny. So you can you can chat with the bot um, and then it will, like I said, use AI. It will search our knowledge base and perhaps find you the answer you're looking for without even needing to, to talk to anyone or phone anyone or whatever. So if you want to try that, that option is there. But of course, everyone's still welcome to email or call us, whichever they prefer. Just about giving more options. It's interesting, isn't it, that, you know, maybe sometimes you have a problem and you go on to a knowledge base and you realize, oh, yeah, someone else has had this problem before and it's been covered. But you don't always think of that. Your first thought is normally I need to ring someone. So it's a yeah. great point you've made. Yeah, it's sometimes more popular than you might think that issue. So definitely worth checking. Yeah, definitely. If you're sitting at home on a Saturday evening and you can't, mm -hmm. you know, you can't call anyone, you go on the knowledge base. OK, yeah. brilliant. Um Will, just to quickly uh, welcome to the session. It's your first time and you've been with Sight and Sound a couple of months, I think. Um, and you're joining Sight and Sound on an apprenticeship, isn't that right? Yeah, so I've uh, I've been with Sight and Sound for about nine-ish months now, I want to say, nine, ten months. Uh, and I'm still, still in the middle of my apprenticeship, so uh, still learning a lot, still getting to grips with some of the technologies I otherwise didn't have a uh, bit of knowledge on, but I like to say that I've settled in and that I'm getting on with, uh, with all of the work that there is. Fantastic. Uh, great to have you here. And Tris, uh, great to see you back. You're the man behind a lot of the work on this knowledge base, so I'm sure you'd love everyone to go and try it out. Hello there. Yeah. Um, well, no, give it a try. I mean, I've tried to put as much stuff that we can anticipate that you might need in there. Uh, and I think we've got in, you know, getting into the weeds of, you know, sort of slightly more obscure issues. So they're certainly definitely worth a punt, especially if it's out of hours anyway. Absolutely. Yeah. Go to the knowledge base. It's uh, a great resource. So let's, we are going to go to, I see, we have a few raised hands. Um, just again, to remind people, you can raise your hand. We will, we have a queuing system, but we will get to you as quickly as possible. Um, but before we do that, we, um, we got a query yesterday um, that Sharon brought along with her to the tech surgery. So Sharon, welcome again. Great to have you. Um, Hi. You, you, you had a query about uh, one that I think is probably going to face a lot of people and might be right now, this issue of Windows 10 machines and upgrading to Windows 11. Yeah, that's right, because Windows 10 is going to go end of support next year. Um, so I, I mean, I'd recommend, recommend people to move to Windows 11 if they can, but um, you might, it just depends on your laptop whether you can do that or not, but the guys might have more ideas than me about that. So any any thoughts from, from the panel on that? Like Windows 11, should we be, should people be upgrading? Because Windows 10 will, as Sharon said, become the end of life. Um, that's an interesting question, isn't it, really? Because it depends a little bit on how old your machine is. So I think if you, your machine is sort of like getting to four or five years old, um, yes, you could upgrade to Windows 11, but you might not necessarily clear the bar in terms of the system requirements. So um, there's a little utility that you can download off of Microsoft, which you can run on your machine, and it will tell you whether it's uh, Windows 11 compliant or not. Uh, so maybe that'd be the first thing to do. We've got a knowledge base article about that, uh, which will give you the necessary links and uh, what you need to do. Uh, to run that tool. And so maybe if you've got a Windows 10 machine, that's the first thing you might want to try doing. Um, but yeah, if your machine's four or five years old, it might be one of those things where you say probably a new machine might be a, a, a better way to start Windows 11 with. Yeah, I always think it's good to start if you're going to a new operating system, if the machine's a bit old already, yeah. as you say, it might be a good time to do that upgrade. Okay, but great question and a good one to start us with, I think. So we're going to go to raise hands. Let's um, put the guys to work. And uh, we're going to start with um, with Sandy Tompkins, uh, which is great to see Sandy at an event. And then we're going to go to Kevin Garwood next. So uh, Sandy, hopefully you'll be able to unmute yourself. You should receive a little prompt that asks you, would you like to unmute? Hi, Sandy. Hello, Stuart. Can you hear me? Hello. We can. Hang on, I'm just going to turn my voice off. Okay, can you hear me now? We can. Oh, good. Oh, right, this is the most basic question. For someone who's used an iPhone since, you know, since iPhone started, I'm amazed at myself, but I cannot get out of this little clinch, which is to do with verbosity on iOS. 
I am now running the latest iOS 18 on an iPhone 14 Pro. Um, and the voiceover is pronouncing every full stop, every exclamation mark, every single bit of um, arrows and right arrows. It's driving me nuts. And I've been into settings and I've looked in verbosity and I've ticked none. I've ticked some. I've done all the different permutations I can think of and it makes no difference. Now, I do know I caused this. I was setting up a shortcut uh, to enable, I think, or some kind of one of the camera apps to do something if I tap the back of the phone. Um, I never managed to finish fixing up that shortcut, but it was after that that this started. So is there any suggestions how I can change it? So that'd be punctuation. Yeah, I think yeah, that's it... punctuation, isn't it? Not the velocity that you're looking at. Sounds like so, right. Yeah, it would definitely be punctuation. I'm sure there would be a way I, in voiceover I, to do that. I did go into what I think. I, I can't remember if it was under verbosity or not. It was on the voiceover settings, and it was punctuation. Yeah. And you get a choice between all, none, and some. Yeah, that's what yeah. you should get. I yeah, I've changed, I've changed it so you, many times. And it doesn't make any no, difference. No, no. So I've you're... done something else. Okay, so you're using the two-finger swipe down to read the whole document. Is that what, what you're doing? No, no, it, it it doesn't matter what the phone is doing, whether it's going through my email lists, you know, before you go in to open them, it'll say such and such comma, such and such full stop, such and such uh, double arrows, open brackets. And then when I go in and read the actual message, it does exactly the same thing. So it's okay. doing it right across the system and text. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, um, I don't know. It might be one of those bugs that's popped up. Um, no, as no, I did it. I did it, and, and nobody else on the other list I'm on has got yeah. this. And it, it was on. Right. It was on before I upgraded to uh, eighteen. Oh, so you and had it, the problem it, it, way yes, back. Okay, it's it come across with it. Mm. Um, I don't know. That might be. I might. Um, because I'm just trying to think. The um, so if you've set it to none, like it says on their as, as, page yeah. that as long as punctuation sent to none, it, it should read text as you'd normally read it. But maybe mm. like Tris was alluding to, maybe it's just some weird kind of setting that, that's gone in. Maybe it's worth resetting the voiceover preferences to default. Is there, a, is there a weird... default? I think so. Yeah. If you go into the voiceover utility and then file, I think there's a reset all voiceover preferences option. Maybe it's worth trying that. I don't know if Tris has got that. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, it'd probably be good to reset to get to a known set of defaults, and at least then you sort of know where you are. So um, where would I find that in Voiceover Settings? Yeah, so it'd be under the Settings app, um, Accessibility, Voiceover. It'll be somewhere underneath all of that. There's yeah. a, <laughs> there's there, a lot. <laughs> there's a lot there's of a se There's a setting. Uh, there's a gesture, um, and I just can't remember how to do it. So one of our audience will tell us, I've no doubt. Uh, there's right. a gesture that lets you, um, that goes into like the voiceover qu quick settings, I think I want to call it, but it might right. be called something yeah. else. I wonder, yeah. is there something in there? And Maybe. I just cannot remember what the gesture is. It could be three finger, double uh, tap. I think it's quadruple tap with two fingers. There, you see, that's why we hired this guy, because he just has the answers. <laughs> is he that, right? that opens what, the voiceover quadruple? quick settings. That's where right. I think you need to be. So uh, you think that might that might that I might be able to find a, a default or something in there? I uh, yeah. think I think all the so that puts all the the quick the most commonly used voiceover settings in there, and I think there might be an option to reset it in there. Okay, I should try it. Do, if you if you get it before the end of the session, Sandy, report back to us. I will. All right. Thanks a million. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, that's a good uh, tri quadruple tap with two fingers. That's one of the issues with voiceover. There's so many gestures. Uh, so Kevin, um, we're going to come to Kevin and just remind you, you can raise your hand and you can also chat if you want as well, Alt and H or use the chat option on your phone. Uh, Kevin, you should be able to unmute. Uh, you might get a little request to ask you to unmute. And uh, hiya, Kevin. I think we had you there. It went on mute. I'm going to try that sure. again. Hi, Kevin. I think you keep unmuting and then it mutes for some reason. So we'll try again. So if you uh, if you just want to try responding to the to the unmute request, and if that doesn't work, we'll come back to you, Kevin. 
there you go. No, you keep muting yourself again, Kevin. I'll come back to you in a little while, okay? Um, so we'll 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 keep your we'll keep your hand up and we'll definitely try and get back to you again. Um Sharon, anything in chat that you've spotted that you want to draw our attention to or not? I uh, know. <laughs> Nothing in chat. Okay. Everyone's very quiet and I've checked that everyone can chat that the restrictions aren't on or anything. No problem. So everyone can chat to everyone. So everyone can chat to everyone. Lonely okay. Here. <laughs> okay. We are. Um oh, something's so, just popped up. Okay. Uh and I think it's about Windows Defender. I just briefly glimpsed at it the, is, the chat. Yes. That's a uh, question that's a I have as well, actually. actually. Yeah, is, I want to ask is this Is Windows question. Defender good enough, or do I need a third-party product to secure my computer? Excellent and this question. is and this is really interesting, actually. I'd love to hear the guy's view on this because I was talking to someone the other day uh, who had got a laptop with, I think it was McAfee or Norton, and said to me, "Should I uninstall them?" And I said, "Absolutely, get rid of them." And then I said, "God, am I right? Should I install them?" So, <laughs> lads, I think it is subjective. To be fair, I reckon we've probably all got our own opinions on this one. Um, I'll start by saying i reckon defender windows defender is good enough personally i think that but i suppose it just depends on you know the activity and what you're doing and um it might just like if you if you trust yourself to be downloading like trustworthy files and that sort of thing and being a safe browser of the internet then i think defenders quite quite good for that but the third party ones tend to be a little bit more secure so they can kind of protect you if you if you're not sure like what website you're visiting or download downloading but they can be a bit restrictive as well especially when it comes to bi software um we've known it before with some antiviruses and stuff to affect the installations of stuff like jaws and zoom text that's definitely not a new thing um, not all the time but can happen um, um over to you guys though okay um I um I think Windows Defender is probably the best choice for most people. Um, the trouble with the third-party ones is that they sometimes slow your PC down disproportionately. So we're talking about the McAfee's, the Norton's, the um, um, of that sort of bit, um, variety of um, solution. Uh, the other thing is, is that um, they will sometimes get you or your access technology. I mean, there was one year, it was quite a few years ago, where we had every single copy of Zoom text of a particular version go down because one of the antivirus packages ate one of its components. Um, so having a sophisticated antivirus can be a bit of a, an own goal because it's got so many things that has to justify its existence, um, but it's got lots more things to go wrong with it. Um, so that's one of sort of the negatives about it. Uh, the other thing to be aware of, and I think this is much more of a general point rather than a uh, sort of a, a, a kind of philosophy, if you like, is that, you know, whenever you insert an antivirus into an operating system, there's always the chance that it goes wrong. I mean, the thing with the uh, CrowdStrike uh, outage um, a, a couple of months ago was basically due to a third party antivirus but stopped all of those 8 million computers from booting. Um, so you, 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 you can wind up with very specific problems. And I, I think that the other thing with antiviruses, they also might tend you to think that you're invincible on the internet and you're, you definitely aren't because you're depending on that antivirus to get you out of the hole. Whereas it's always better to be slightly more cautious and mindful of what you're doing, especially online anyway. Um, so there's a sort uh, of a, a negative on it. Okay, answer, Will, yeah. Will, any any thoughts from you on the antivirus? Yeah. So my view, similar to Tris, um, by and large, Windows Defender is more than capable for most people, especially since gone are the days of the internet where you can click on anything and suddenly you've downloaded malware. Um, by and large, the way things have progressed, it's to the point where most things are legitimate, most things are secure. You shouldn't need to worry about it all too much. Um, if you aren't absolutely confident, do get a third-party antivirus if it just gives you that additional peace of mind. But one of the things that I don't think has actually been covered either by Ash or Tris is the fact that using the antiviruses themselves, so accessing the menus, for example, is, at least from my experience with them, it's a very inaccessible 
process a lot yeah, of the time yeah we yeah, yeah we've it. had that for years um yeah i don't know about nod 32 used to be the antivirus to go for because it had a a skinless environment because what a lot of these antivirus packages do is they they get skin to make them look nice and pretty and it's just covering yeah. over the 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 regular interface and nod 32 used to have a mode where you could run it without all of those skins but used to disrupt the screen readers i don't know if it still does um but yeah that is a problem with a lot of them they, they they're fairly inaccessible a lot of them yeah. avg has got its problems norton and mcafee have always had their problems uh, and then a lot so, of yeah. them think jaws and stuff like because it's a screen reader the yeah. technology of that it kind of thinks that jaws is trying to steal information of course it's not but i think it sees that sort of thing as a threat a potential threat so yeah you can if, get things yeah if the heuristics get the wrong end of a stick then they might attack your access technology yeah. Yeah, I've noticed yeah. that okay. as well. Okay. So definitely, I think lots of things to consider there if you are looking at antivirus. I know um, certainly I've I've been running Windows Defender on my own PC for a long time and touch wood, no issues. Um, Sharon, I see a few things popping into chat. I don't know if you yeah. wanted to flag any of them for us. That's oh, a great there. question. Um, Adara said actually Avast. Remember Avast? Oh my god, yeah, yeah. 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 I think that was the one that ate the Zoom text components. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. okay, yeah, that it slows down Adara says it slows down your um, machine as well. Yeah. Um, which is oh, another yeah. thing that these things can do if you've got too much running. So it's a great question from Peter. Thanks very much for that. Um we have a question from Amy. She has a Braille Sense emotion braille display. And um she thought that when she connected to an iPhone, the the audio could be transferred over. Yeah, it's so, so voiceover so can be audio. heard on the display. On the display, yeah. 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 So there I guess is an that's option. Not working. <laughs> there is an option, Amy. I assume, and you can come back to us if you want. I assume you have. There's a option under in the global options. I do believe. I don't have a Braille motion in front of me. But it's in global options and it is send audio via Bluetooth during connection. I think it's turned off by default. You need to turn that on with the space bar and then press enter to save your changes. Uh, and that should then route the audio through the speakers of your Braille motion. And I can understand why you'd want to do that, because if you're wearing maybe a um, um, an earpiece and your Braille motion, you want all the audio to come through it. So it's a good idea. So you do have to turn it on. It's not there by default. So that might be the issue. Okay, hopefully that makes sense, Amy. Um, always, you could always get in touch with some, for some help to do that anyway, Stuart. Absolutely, give us a shout. Yep, definitely. Okay. Um, here's one. When Roy says, when is the camera up upgrade for the Envision glasses expected? Gosh, I don't think we could answer that. <laughs> <laughs> I Has think in, heard I, I, I think in many cases we're waiting for these things as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I haven't heard any news. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't heard anything about it, I'm afraid. Um we wait for all but, these upgrades with bated breath. Yeah, and I I didn't listen to the recent the most recent ones, so to be honest. Um the re most recent webinar that is. Okay, so uh, sorry, Roy, <laughs> we're, we're, your your guess is as good as ours. Um, moving on, what uh, Sai says, what are some cool AI features that we are all using to make everyday life a little easier? Oh, wow, this is a great question. And we we, we were question. at an event yesterday, Sharon and I, we were talking about this very thing. Mm -hmm. So maybe, maybe, maybe the panel might like to share their AI features or anything they're interested in it doesn't have to be related well, to just to, i don't know if um so i was here when we first started but just to touch on the um i mean we use ai for our support website now so on our on our support page you can use our like chatbot and our knowledge base and it uses ai to kind of search our knowledge base of any sort of frequently known answers or frequently asked questions to give you an answer based on previous customer issues so that's one way we use it here at least i think one of the uh the easiest answers at least in this regard is the picture smart ai for jaws um i think that there's some more developments coming for that as well soon um but 
says what it is on the tin. It uses AI to interpret images using, I think, this multiple different uh, AI models. Yeah, so Claude and ChatGPT, I think, is uh, what it's using. And I know that there are further developments planned for it. And um, with some testing, it has proven to be fairly accurate. I think we did some yeah. testing together, didn't we, Stuart? Yeah, it's amazing stuff. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, because I think uh, I think earlier on this year, it was sort of in the early part of twenty four. Um, uh, Be my eyes, I think, were um, getting AI sort of integrated in all of their process, and uh, at that point, fairly shortly after, Freedom Scientific started dropping bits of um, AI assistance into their Picture Smart uh, feature. And that's turned out to be useful for all sorts of things, like making sense of diagrams, like, uh, I don't know, corporate hierarchy sort of thing um, and, and other stuff. So just getting nice descriptions of a of a picture. Um, and you Smart. can get all of that with your copy of Jaws. Or three Smart Vision. Oh, <laughs> sorry, sorry, Chris. Mm. Uh, Smart Vision has a similar thing as well that's being developed. Um spoke with them not too long ago but under the lookout app if i recall correctly there's a beta testing mode for a uh, an ai scene describer essentially so you take a picture of the area around you and it will describe what's in the surrounding area so let's say you're at the beach and there's a a dog um running through the uh, running through the water you take a picture of that and it will tell you that there is a dog running through the water so it's a something that you can take out with you something that you aren't limited to be using at home brilliant and it's great that you know it, it's always interesting to hear about people's use of ai i've been uh, doing a lot of using it very simple thing really but very important to your uh, when you're organizing your clothes you want to wash all your whites together so i find myself taking a picture in the evenings of the the top or shirt i'm wearing am i wearing a white shirt today so you know a man wearing a whatever white shirt i say okay that needs to go in a separate pile uh most basic uses of ai but i find it very helpful sharon what do you use ai for anything exciting in your car or anything anything else no nothing no <laughs> no ai for sharon no um, i haven't i haven't really embraced it yet i show yeah. it to a lot of people and in vision glasses and picture smart and and stuff and i think it's great but okay. for me myself i'm not quite there it's <laughs> it's probably it's probably worth saying that that sometimes the people who need ai most and i'm speaking from maybe from a job perspective are the people who can't get access to it because a lot of big organizations you know are uh, um, understandably, you know, nervous about AI and may have it blocked. So some of those great features that uh, Will was mentioning, the picture smart in JAWS, which can be very useful in all sorts of situations, might be turned off uh, in the organization where you work. Uh, it's just worth bearing that in mind. Um, I'm just going to try going back to Kevin because he still has his hand raised and it must be killing him leaving it up for so long. Sore elbow at this stage. Mm. So Kevin, if you want to try unmuting again and maybe just press the unmute once and hopefully it'll keep you unmuted this time. And uh, we'd be delighted to hear your, your question. Uh, just try this again in case we get Kevin back. And I don't think we have Kevin. Okay, we will we will come back. Oh, there. Uh, Hi, Kevin, oh. we have you. Yes. Sorry, I just couldn't find the buttons right away. That's okay. No problem. <laughs> I'm um, glad we got you. Yes, indeed. Thank you very much. Um, I've got a question about Smart Vision 3. Um, oh, and um, basically, um, I just want to confirm it's it, it, underneath all the technology, it's just basically a standard Android phone. Because I'm considering buying a pair of the Ray-Ban Meta glasses and the... Um, the requirements are uh, Android 10 or higher. So I'm hoping that really, because it's Android 11, in theory, should be no problem in downloading the app. It is Android 11, yeah. So yeah. you're right, in theory, in theory it should should work fine. Okay. Um, there's obviously a lot of third-party apps out there. We, we can't test all of them. Obviously, but, yes. Yeah, but um, with that in mind, yeah, general rule of thumb, as long as it's, it's compatible with that Android version, it should be all right. Excellent. Okay, that's good. 
Uh, Brilliant. please. No, no, thank you. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks, Kevin. Good to speak to you. Thanks very much. Okay. Um, so if anybody, again, if you do want to raise your hand, Alt and Y, Option Y if you're on a Mac or uh, within the more options on the clients for Zoom on both uh, iOS and Android, you will find the raise hand button. And similarly, you can chat and we'd love to hear your comments. Um, anything else in chat, Sharon? Yep, we have a an interesting question that um, I wouldn't be able to answer, but hopefully you can. From Julie, it's, hi guys, can I sync the Braille Sense 6 mini schedule manager calendar to my iPhone? Great question. Mm. Uh, I feel like that might be one for our support unless, Stuart, you know how to do that. <clears throat> well, I was, tr I, was I was trying to think, how will I answer this one in a succinct way? Uh, so the, the short answer is yes. The longer answer is you have to go, there has to be something in between because the Braille Sense, because it's an Android device, won't sync natively with an iCloud uh, calendar. Yeah. But you could have, for example, a Google calendar on your phone or an Exchange, uh, a Microsoft calendar, and, and, you, and, and use that as your default calendar and the Braille Sense would sync with that. So it kind of depends what calendar you're using. But even if you are using the iCloud calendar, you can easily switch your default calendar on iOS. So it probably is one for a further discussion, maybe a, a bit of tech support, whether it goes to the guys in support or, or and I'm happy to help if, if needed. Great. Um, hopefully that's good for you, Julie. And um, Sandy has just fixed her iPhone. Hey. Hey. Brilliant. Just you see, that's that's Goodness where these that. webinars are. Good yeah, stuff. it's good to it's good to hear something worked out at the end, isn't it? So thanks for telling us, Sandy. Um, and I, Amy also says thanks very much. She's she's just started using her um, Braille display, and she's but she hasn't explored the settings much. So uh, hopefully yeah. she'll be able to Com find that easily. Com completely understand that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Come back to okay. us if you need help, Amy. So I might go to Foreshta, whose hand is raised. Um, so Foreshta, you should be able to unmute yourself and we'd uh, love to hear your question. Hi, Foreshta. Hi, good afternoon. Can you hear me? We can indeed. Okay. Um, I have two questions. My first question is about Polaris. I am using Polaris, but um, unfortunately, I am not able to download uh, some apps anymore. For, for instance, Skype. Uh, I'm not able to uh, download Skype in my Polaris anymore. This is my first question. And my second question is about the JAWS. Um, before that, when I get a PDF file and then it says the document is empty, when I press the, um, uh, uh, what they call it, application, application then um, I get the option called uh, uh, um, um, convert with JAWS in Word but it doesn't work anymore. And uh, this is what I really need sometimes to have it. It said what, sorry, convert PDF to Word? Uh, yeah, because I be used to use it uh, uh, with JAWS and it says uh, convert with JAWS into Word. We still have this option, but it doesn't work. Yeah, there could be a, there could be a few things going wrong now with the Adobe and PDF situation. Um, one of the main ones is because every time Adobe Reader, which is the application you tend to read these things in, um, every time it updates, it resets some of its settings. And there's one particular setting in there called um, I think it's I think they call it protected mode on at startup and that one gets turned on and in that particular case Jaws can't get access to the document 
so it might be, but it's just some of the settings in the Adobe Reader that need going through that might actually restore things. Um, because what happens is, is if you load a document into Adobe Reader, um, a document has basically two layers to it, if you think of it, a bit like a box of chocolates or whatever. You've got the visual layer, which is what every, you know, people who can see get a sight of. And then there's something called the text layer. And when JAWS or Zoom text see there's actual text in the text layer, it will obviously read that document back to you. But if JAWS, for example, doesn't see anything in a the text layer, then it will then automatically go to the next option along the way, which is to basically do an OCR process on the document so you can read it. Uh, and that normally will work. But if the security on Adobe Reader is turned on, it will stop you getting access to even that bit of the document. Um, and yet there's another potential issue that you've got, which is whether the document is allowed to be printed. Some documents are have, have got permissions on them which stop them from being printed. And any document that has been had printing disallowed on it, that OCR option in JAWS won't work either. Uh, so it was, was, was a mixture of settings and the document specifically that might be the issue there, but it might be one for support maybe. But uh, um, I don't use the OCR to read, for instance, a box of chocolate or whatever. No, no. I just have the document before I open with the Adobe. Yep. I just press application, the document, and uh, 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 enter on uh, convert with JAWS in Word. Yeah. When I press enter and it says, um, you know, wait, wait, you have to wait, yep. you have to mm -hmm. wait, and nothing is changed. Right. Okay. Well, there might be something wrong with yours possibly at that point. Um, so I think that's one of the things that, it, it might be a couple of things that are going on there. Possibly we need to do a remote session to fix all of that. Because uh, there be could be a couple of points where it's going wrong. I see. Well, it, it's something in the Adobe settings or it's the document that's doing it, but it's hard to know what it is from this distance. Yeah. But it if usually you, can be sorted. Yeah, but if you could also answer my question about Polaris. Um. No, I think the position is there's something most of the Android apps they probably they probably require um what Android ten or later these days, possibly. So that's probably yeah. the reason why the Polaris won't play because uh, it, uh, it's only it's only Android six or something Android like that. Android five five point five, I think. Yeah. Oh there we go, yeah. So, so you have to that's there's very it. few apps gonna run on yeah. the Polaris now. Um and we've heard that as well from other people fresh to unfortunately, and the Polaris is as such well. Obviously, there's a newer device now, but even if there wasn't, the hardware can't be updated anymore. So yeah, the the whole issue with sort of devices like Polaris and Braille Sense and similar note takers is that they are the actual hardware is much more tied to the operating system than it's like with a regular PC where you can just install another version of Windows on it. The chipset and the particular Android version are are kind of sort of much more in lockstep with one another and you can't just upgrade the operating system like you would on a desktop PC. So that unfortunately is the reason why note taker devices sometimes have to give way to progress. Um, and so, so there, you... is, there is no way to actually means uh, change the hardware or... No. No, there there isn't. I think we asked that him that question a while back, but basically there isn't there isn't an upgrade path from the Polaris yeah. that you can use. I think the hardware is different. There was it was discussed. I know Trace is right, but yeah, unfortunately not. And unfortunately, you're just going to find that more and more with apps for Eshta because as you be you know the Android system is older, the apps just won't support it. I see. So sorry for the sorry for the bad news. No, no that's fine. And uh, can you tell me where <clears throat> where I should go to check the setting about uh, the convert OCR with JAWS in in Word? Um, well, the the magic keystroke is Control and K in Adobe Reader, but you have to look in security. 
category. Uh, I think this protective mode at startup is is the option that's most likely to in be Jones causing a or in, yeah. in, in no in, in Adobe, Adobe Reader. So if you don't open Adobe Reader, then press Control and K, yeah. or it's at the bottom of the edit menu if I remember correctly. Um, it, it's in the security settings and it's protective mode at startup is the one that really cripples JAWS or Zeme text from accessing a PDF document. Okay. Yeah, I can try it. But as I mentioned, um, before I opened the Adobe, I, I tried to just uh, just uh, press application. Okay. And, uh, Reshda, do you, do you want to try it and maybe come back to us if it doesn't work? It come back into the support team because um, I do have a couple of hands raised, so we're going to have to yeah. move it on, I'm afraid. But just check it out and um, we'll definitely come back to us if you have anything else. Um, I'm going to go. I know there's some chats that Charm will want to talk to us about, I'm sure. But I'm going to go to Derek, who's been waiting for a little while. Derek Child and uh, anyone who else who wants to raise their hand can do so. Derek, I hope you can unmute yourself. There you go. Um, oh, I think you were mute. You were unmuted, Derek. We'll we'll try that again. Hopefully, you can unmute yourself and. Um, ask your question, and if not, we'll come back. Okay, I might come back to Derek. Can you hear me? Can oh, hear we me? have you, yep. Ah, oh, hello, Stuart. Hello. How are you doing? Good to, good hey. to talk to you again. Yeah. Um, I've been a user, for, uh, a user rather than a tech person for many years, both corporately and since I've retired. I purchased a... Um, Hims uh, player back in December last year, and I just wondered if there's any training resources that um, might be available. I I, I followed um, Jenny Axler's excellent tutorial, but I feel I need a bit more. I don't feel I completely understand. Um, I don't completely understand how it all works. I was about to ask you had you looked at the tutorial, so you have, which is great. Yeah. Um, I mean, I suppose that my question is, do, do the tech team know anybody who might happy to pay them um, to, to walk me through? Because I just can't quite get to grips with it or it, it doesn't do things reliably. Yeah, I guess, uh, normally we would start by yeah suggesting like quick start guides or audio guides. It sounds like you've already, already tried that. So normally the next of call would be maybe some one-on-one -on -one training might or even remote training might be a good option um so, is that something you do remotely or would yeah I, I, I certainly can help with it derek if you want to maybe the best thing is if you just want to drop me an email i will um and let's see can we get it might and to be honest like it might be a matter of just getting on a call for 20 minutes and figuring out a few things that might get you yeah. up and running I mean, um, I mean, Jen, Jenny's uh, tutorial is excellent, but it doesn't quite answer my questions. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I'll do that, Stuart. I'll send you an email. Yeah, send me an email. And look, if we feel then there's more training needed, we can always have a chat about that. But yeah. I think if we get on the phone and have a chat, we'll we'll find we might be able to fix a few things pretty quick. I think part of my problem is I've grown up on the on the stream series of readers and i've never used tim's products before so maybe yeah. that's the learning curve that i need to go through yeah no problem well look um drop me an email i'll come back to you we'll see what we can sort out thank you thank you Stuart. all right no bother derek okay uh we do have a hand raised but maybe we should check in with sharon on the chat first and then we'll go back to our raised hand Yes, thanks, Stuart. There's there's a couple of people, Michael and Julie, who've come back about the PDF issues and said that they use Microsoft Edge, that Microsoft Edge is reading PDF documents better than in Adobe. Yeah. I, have a, I have a feeling, oh, sorry, I just going to say I have a feeling that Foresta's issue is relating to an image inside a PDF. Right. So I think Edge won't, won't read that anyway, I think. Yeah, that Look might be on. might be the case. Uh, yeah, as for whether it works better if you use the Edge browser to do it, um, I, I I know it does. Um, I just don't know whether you can absolutely depend on it in all situations. Mm -hmm. It may well work. I mean, it, I I think if if you're happy with it and it works for the cases that you you deal with, then that's absolutely fine. I think the official answer is we still want to be opening the documents in Adobe Reader, but 
you know whatever works for you to some extent i mean i think it works in if you do it in firefox as well you know it will read back the document to you but uh a browser is kind of a slightly different sort of thing it doesn't maybe have all the facilities that you would do yeah. in adobe reader maybe i noticed also there's an article on the knowledge base about um jaws uh, about settings the best settings in yeah, adobe yeah. for we, jaws which yeah, might be we worth have, a read yeah that that's that's quite a good read yeah there's there's, there's there's loads and loads of settings in adobe because um they started off with a wonderful pdf technology and then what adobe found was that it was fundamentally insecure in many ways so they've over the last 20 or 25 years they've tacked on more and more stuff onto the mm. existing spec so it's an absolute sprawling mess of settings uh, and unless you do it every day, you don't know where you're sitting. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and that's a definitely lot of, worth a read. I've noticed that there's little um, kind of little boxes that pop up as well when you're on Adobe, or like suggestions and things like that. Oh that can god, be difficult yes. to get out of. I think they would be, wouldn't they? Yeah, that's probably true. Yeah, if you just installed it, it's probably trying to tell you something fabulous about itself. But of course, that's no good if you're on a screen <laughs> reader and it's blocking some text. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Have you come across that? Um, I don't think I've come across that recently, but it, okay. it's probably because I haven't installed Adobe quite so recently. Okay. Um, I, I think the thing with Thanks. PDFs in general is you never know what's going to happen when you open them. Different results all the time. Uh, so thanks for that. Anything else, Sharon, you wanted to draw our attention to? Uh, no. Okay. No. Okay. <laughs> So I'm going to go to Michael Capacci. I really hope I've pronounced that correctly, Michael. If I didn't, I do apologize. Um, so Michael, you should be able to unmute and we'd love to hear your question. And then we're going to go back to Kevin. Hi, Michael. Hello there. Um, I I use uh, Microsoft Edge uh, a lot uh, for PDF documents. Brilliant. And it's okay if it works well? Yeah, it does, yeah. And... I like to, um, I, I, I don't have any problems with it, you know, and uh, it works very well. You don't need, I don't use uh, PDF documents. I use Edge to do to do that. Yeah, it, uh, it probably will be fine. If you've got a professional document where they've actually populated the text layer, there shouldn't be any problem with reading them in Edge. If you do wind up for PDF that's got um, printing permissions disallowed on it or it's got an image in it, you probably need to be looking at uh, maybe either Picture Smart or, yeah, probably Picture Smart would be your next best bet in terms of getting access to the document. But if it's a professional, professionally authored document, it should be fine. Thank to you. be fair, a colleague I work with always says uh, Edge, all of its woes being not so good web browser, it's a brilliant PDF viewer. So, oh, well, there we go. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So it looks like Edge might be one to use for PDFs. As But as Tris says, the text has to be in the, the text layer, I suppose, uh, is the key thing. Um, but thanks for that, Michael. Appreciate your feedback. It's always good to hear what other people are using. So uh, definitely good to know that. Um, Kevin, um, we're going to go back to you. So you should be able to unmute yourself. And... Be delighted to hear your question. Audio now on music alert. No Hi, Kevin. Hello there. Can How you hear you me doing? okay? We can. Lovely. Uh, a good question okay, about... Well, I'm going to move into a new role that will involve reading scan copies of the information on their A good question about the uh, Sense Player. I've got, a, um, I've got a Sense Player, which I'm absolutely delighted with. And I've also got a Blaze ET, which I bought quite some time ago. And... Um, it's to do with the recordings uh, on the blaze you can do excellent recordings um with a wire from the um headphone socket on the pc but i don't think there is a wired option on the um on the sense player to do recordings is there no because it, it doesn't have a line in socket uh, no. which is something that the blaze used to have that's right you can you can hook it up to a, a, a separate sound adapter if it's got a USB-C connection. Um, but, yeah, it doesn't have a built-in line socket. Okay. Right, so it'd have to be a, like a USB to USB uh, connection sort of thing. If, yeah, it'd have to be a little USB sound adapter that's got an input on it, but you can, you know, that would have the line socket on it. Right, okay, fair enough. That's okay. 
that's okay. I can still make recordings with the blade, so I'm happy with that. So that's fine. Okay. Okay. Thank All right, you. Kevin. Thanks a million. Thank you for your question. Um, okay, and it, it's interesting, isn't it, uh, Tris? You, you just mentioned there about you know sort of the the blaze and the sense player, and maybe something something sometimes you'll use an older device for a specific task because maybe it has a function that really works well for you that the new device doesn't have, or maybe it has a function in a different way, as you mentioned there, using um, USB C audio, which which might work for some people but not everyone. Yeah, I think that's very much the case. I mean, my guess is that when they were putting the sense player together, they had some idea of how many people are using line in socket. And, you know, probably they figured there aren't really enough of them to justify putting a, a dedicated socket on it for that purpose. Yeah. Um, I would guess. Um, yeah, obviously, you can make recordings for microphone, though, instead. And there are USB C sound adapters that you can get. And I suppose that's the great thing about something like the Sense Player, because if you have a good USB mic yeah. uh, or USB audio device, you there's can a good use chance that. it's going to work. Yeah, uh, yeah, and it's going to have probably far better audio circuitry in it than an, a Blaze or a Sense Player would do. Absolutely, ordinarily speaking, anyway. Okay, um, we are in the last into the last ten minutes of the session. This time flies. Um, so last chance for anybody who might want to put their hand up if you've got a burning question. If there's something you want to ask our tech support uh, panel, um, you can do that. You can also put a message in chat uh, if there's a quick question you have. I did mention that I would. I did say I would mention the contact information for tech support. So. Um, Maybe rather than me mentioning it, Ash, it's probably better if all that info comes from you if you're happy to do that. Or how to reach. What's how to get in touch with tech support, yeah. Yeah, sure. So uh, just get in touch with tech support. Um, you can email support at sightandsound.co.uk. Um, that'll create a ticket for you and we can correspond with you from there. That's probably the most popular way of getting in touch. Or, of course, just phoning us um, on 01604 798 070. Um, or as I said earlier, you can you can check our support page out on our website, and you can chat to our intelligent chatbot, and that will sort of browse our knowledge base. Mm -hmm. And and it is it, it it is important, isn't it, Ash? Because I, I, I know you've said it before that in relation to the email, you'll get a support ticket, you'll get a number, and to keeping that number in the thread of of emails will allow you guys to to sort of track that much easier. Yeah, I mean, it's it's harder to remove that. It will automatically stay in there anyway. But um, yeah, that, that ticket number is quite key for us. Um, you'll get an automatic reply if you email us to give you that ticket number. Um, so if you've decided to phone us about it or something, it's quite helpful if you quote that ticket number to us. We can find it a bit more easily then. Okay, brilliant. Um, Sandy has come back with a raised hand. So uh, she might have another challenge, guys, just before we finish up. So uh, Sandy... Hopefully you can. Um... I think Sai had a question as well in the chat. And Sai, oh Sai, okay. We'll get to Sai's question then as well. Sandy, you should be able to unmute yourself. I hope. Um... I'm not sure if it's. Uh... Uh, we have you, Sandy. Ah, uh, I've got you. Do you know? It would be lovely if they could just impr improve. Uh, maybe a, a gesture. Uh, on voiceover to unmute. Yes, you know I mean? yes. Trying yeah. to find it. A gesture would be great, wouldn't it? Uh, we might even be able to set up our own now. I don't know. Anyway, this is this is a very loose kind of question. So if you've got anything more important, take it, you know. The question is this. It's about um, AI. I did hear you talking about it earlier, but I was so busy trying to get my phone to work properly. I didn't hear you properly. But I am a great fan of it. I use it with my Meta Ray-Ban glasses and apps like o Orion, which is a very good little app, but there, and also the onboard one, the four finger triple tap, and it starts describing objects around you. It's really good. But what I notice is AI can go forwards and it can go backwards with regard to our requirements. You know, like on the Meta Ray-Ban glasses, started off really good reading you stuff. It was easy to get descriptions. Then it got kind of mean and it says, I don't see anything. And I say, can you not see a big white dog? He says, oh, yeah, I see a big white dog. You know what I mean? You have to really pull its teeth to make it. So what I want to know is this, the nature of AI, it's going to keep changing. Is there going to be a way that the different apps like Be My Eyes can hold it still when it's working and only change it, only improve it when they know it's qualitatively 
better? Or does it have to just keep changing? You know, in other words, do we, is it a possibility to have a control over it? Because I think as time goes on, more and more of us will rely on it quite strongly. Uh, yeah, very quickly, that I think there is. Uh, mm. there's, there's, there's something known as an AI prompt, which is usually um, yeah. something that the developer of the AI um, model will um, use in front of your query. Um, but it's not likely to be something you have much control over as the user. But there are means by which you can control how it responds. So, you know, it is possible to tweak the response a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, and I was just, Sandy, we were only, Sharon and I were were uh, running a session yesterday, having a conversation with somebody, and I know exactly what you mean. I know in chat GPT, if you ask it something and you know it's not quite correct, you can say, are you sure about that? And it immediately corrects itself as my apologies, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, that's the sort of thing that happens, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You start sowing yeah. doubt in the AI, you know? Uh, I was in Tesco's one week. I said, what can you see? And he said, oh, bottles of wine. It read me all of the labels. I mean, more than I needed, you know. Uh, the next week I was in there and he said, after several prompts trying to get him to read one of them even, he said, you, perhaps you should uh, go read them for yourself, you know. So the thing can go backwards and forwards, you know. It's, um, oh, mm. gosh. So yeah. I do know that Be My Eyes are aware of this and are trying to customise it. I just wonder how customizable it is because by the nature of it, it's constantly changing, you know? Yeah, it's it's primarily due to how the language model uh, evolves. There's different mm. models. So I think chat GPT is on iteration, I think four or five, I think in terms of defined version now. Yeah, I mean, mm. it's just, it's going so quickly these days. Yeah. They're just mm. piling in all the time now. So yeah, yeah there's a lot yeah. of change going on. And the difficulty is that it, it relies a lot on information that it can scrape from any any area. So it's going to be changing how it responds to you, how it formats its, uh, its messages and just how it behaves. And the difficult thing then is all of these people that sort of, uh, all of these uh, organizations and companies that then tack on to the AI features, so using Claude, using ChatGPT, using Gemini, what then happens is it just um, it just then sort of propagates through until eventually you get to a point where it seems like it's okay, but then more changes are made and it just continues mm. in a cycle. It will improve over time, but it is very much just here and there. Just to quickly touch on one of the things, Sandy, um, that mute or unmute option, uh, for the gesture, mm. was that to mute or unmute voiceover or mute or unmute in Zoom, for example? Uh, I'm I'm in the Zoom app, but it, but I'm using voiceover. Okay. Um, and so and I was uh, this happens every time. It, not only with Zoom, I think other ones like Teams and stuff. People say, right, unmute now, and there's always like a, a minute wait while someone's desperately trying to Look run for around the, the unmute screen. Button. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and yeah. it often only appears once you press something at your end, so you can't cue it. You can't yes. be ready for it. So I'm thinking if we could make a gesture, you know, one of the free gestures that's around on Voiceover, which would just activate the unmute while you're in the Zoom, that would be. That would uh, just makes people so much happier, you know. Uh, okay. Mm. Apologies, I thought you were referring to the voiceover itself, and I do have a gesture for that, but I think that is something you would need to customise. Um, to zo to zoom. Or yeah. yeah, to zoom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Might, I don't yeah. Know might be do one. That. Might be one for accessibility support at Apple. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, might be in the next iOS iteration. Uh, Sandy, mm. thanks a million for that. Great to hear okay. from you as always. Appreciate it. Um, I just want to, because we are just on three o'clock, but I know there was a few quick messages in chat and I don't know, Sharon, if you wanted to refer to anything. Um, yeah, there was um, just, Sai was saying that uh, they're moving to a new role that will involve reading scanned copies of client information. Um, and how, what would you use to do that? I guess picture yeah, smart would probably be a good um, yeah a good option um, for that yeah or uh, well, the jaws convenient ocr of course yeah um so uh, says maybe ocr i assume you mean like digital scan like files rather than physically photocopied if you if you mean photocopied like printouts then you could use hardware like clear reader or omni reader to take a picture of it and then that'll read back to you a bit of hardware, like hard but, copy, yeah. yeah yeah but if you mean like an actual file then um 
like a PDF file, then like we were mentioning earlier, it's duly, um, you probably want to use something like the JAWS uh, convenient OCR, I think it's insert space yeah. O then D, D, I D think. for documents, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that, that does, yeah. uh, scans a PDF file. Yeah. Yeah, great. Oh, okay. um, yeah. And um, there's just another question about when when will AI be available on Ray-Bans in the UK without the need for a VPN? But that's probably another yeah, one that we're all waiting be... for. Think, yeah, yeah. That's, that's controlled by regulators. There's not really much we can do about uh... that. No. And I think there's prob possibly those of you in the UK might get it before those of us in the EU. Uh, it'll be interesting to watch that in the next couple of months and see how the, all that unfolds. But I, I don't think it's going to be quick. Um, I don't think it's going to be a quick one. So thank you, everybody. It's been a great session. Time has flown. Thanks so much mm -hmm. to our panel, uh, Ash, uh, Will, and Tris. And of course, thanks sincerely to Sharon for uh, helping us manage the chat. Thank you to all of you who joined us today and to those people who submitted questions. Uh, as I say, we're back on the 6th of November with a Microsoft Teams special. So do join us for that. Until then, from everyone in Sight and Sound, thanks for listening and we'll talk to you soon.